What's up amigos? Today we're looking at the aerodynamics of a cylinder at a Reynolds number of 100. So it's very low, which means it's laminar. And we have the cylinder here with three different views. We have at the top the, the velocity, sorry. On the right bottom, we have the vorticity. And on the left bottom, we have the pressure. So these are all three important parameters. And this von Kármán street occurring is very normal for a cylinder. And the reason why it occurs is because you have some sort of imbalance that happens between the two sides. So one side will then start to shed, it will, the flow will separate at a certain point, and then this will create an imbalance on the other side, and then the other side will shed uh, equally, and then you'll start to get this flip-flopping back and forth as we see here. So that's the basic mechanics of it. But if you delve into it more, it's very interesting. So let's pause it here, for example, and we'll see the vorticity that's forming. So on the bottom right here, we have the negative vorticity about the z-axis in blue and the positive vorticity around the z-axis in red or orange. And you can see like just behind the cylinder, you actually have the vorticity sort of rolling up directly behind it as well. So there's this sort of this remnant of this um, vortex that's happening around the cylinder happening here as well it's inducing some sort of flow and creating the circulation here and as we play it we can see that the flow is going downstream the stool number for this at around 100 we got was 0 0.162 so this is very um right in the range that you expect it to be at this Reynolds number. As you change the Reynolds number, the stool number will be different. And the stool number is a non-dimensional number that um, allows you to compare the frequency shedding of an object, not just a cylinder, but any object at different conditions. So different um, length scales and different uh, velocity scales. So for this, if you were to get a Reynolds number 100 for a cylinder, the stool numbers will range between about 0 0.15 and 0 0.17. So we're at 0 0.162, which is right in the middle there. And then the question becomes, well, if the Reynolds number is the same, why do we get different frequency sheddings? And in experiments, so in, in real life, there are a few different reasons. The major ones are the surface roughness of the object. No object is completely smooth, obviously, and some are more rough than others. The other um, parameter is the term's intensity level. So both of these parameters affect how laminar or turbulent the flow is, or how chaotic the flow is. And what this means is how much energy the flow has going over the cylinder to allow it to stay attached longer. So generally speaking, if you have a higher radius of curvature, so um, something is very, very sharply curved, then you need to have a faster moving flow to have it attached, to stay attached over it. With a cylinder, for example, if you have a different Reynolds numbers, the detachment point is actually different um, depending on the velocity. So those are the two reasons in practice. In CFD, which this is, you not only have the intensity level, term intensity level, and the uh, roughness of the object, you also have things such as the terminus modeling and then the resolution of the simulation. So these are very important because this is a low Reynolds number, the terms intensity, the, sorry, the terminus modeling doesn't affect the result too much because the flows are very laminar. But if you go to high Reynolds numbers, then that becomes a major factor, as, as does the resolution of the mesh. So coming back to this, we can see that the pressure, interestingly, if we pause it again, we can see that even though we have like fairly a low amount of vorticity, like a small region of vorticity around the cylinder at a certain point, the low pressure region is much greater, it encompasses a much greater region. And this is interesting because the one side actually has a smaller area of vorticity around the cylinder, whereas the other side is much bigger. But the reason why we have a greater, a lower pressure around this smaller area is because this vortex region is much more concentrated. So the vorticity is much, uh, the magnitude of it is much greater than the other side. So even though it is smaller in area, the magnitude is greater, which then causes this lower pressure. And the reason why we have low pressure is because vortices have a low pressure cause. And that's a very easy way to see, um, to identify vortices in terms of this simulation where you can see these low pressure regions cause going downstream, they correspond to the uh, vortex centers. And then they also correspond to low velocity regions in the uh, velocity plot here. So that's the end of this simulation. Make sure to like, subscribe, and if you want to get better at CFD yourself and or theory, check out our courses in the link in the description, and I'll see you in the next podcast. Peace out, amigos.